I have live streamed myself coding a project multiple times and in doing that I've found multiple flaws with live streaming code that makes it a lot worse than say compared to streaming a game. And I see these flaws holding back other streamers that are doing code, not just myself. If you look at the coding section of Twitch, you'll notice that the viewership is very low. The most popular streamers are at anywhere between 100 to 400 viewers max. Maybe I'm just missing when the popular coders are on and streaming, but I've just never seen a stream with a thousand concurrent viewers that is seriously coding. Compare this with the top channels on Twitch right now that are streaming games and they're getting anywhere from 30 to 40 to 50,000 viewers on a daily basis. So why is it that live streaming code is so much less popular? Well, I think it's because three reasons. The first is when you're streaming code, you have two competing interests that take away from each other. On one hand, you actually like want to get stuff done with your project that you're coding. But then on the other hand, we have your viewers who are watching and you wanna make an engaging stream for them and interact with chat. If you're focused on your project, you're gonna be ignoring people in chat. Whereas if you are talking in chat and answering questions, you're literally crippling the progress that you could be making on your project. And I really mean crippling because if you get some focused programming done, your productivity is gonna look something like this. You'll warm up at first and then slowly get into things until you hit kind of a flow state where at this point you are just thinking and it becomes code. And of course, this does not last forever. As you get tired and you run out of brain power, you're gonna reach a point where your productivity drops and you can even get into the negative productivity if you try doing things while you are tired. Now take a look at the graph of your productivity when you are streaming. Notice how you're never able to ramp into the flow state because every time you pause to answer a question in chat, you're being disrupted. The main problem here is context switching is very expensive. When Dr. Disrespect takes a moment to read a donation or to answer a question, it's very easy for him to then go back into the game and continue what he was doing. Compare this when I'm trying to code an elegant quicksort algorithm and somebody in chat asked me for the fourth time whether Angular or React is a better framework. And I pause to answer that, and then when I come back, I lose my thought process, and next thing I know, I just implemented bubble sort. And trying to strike a good balance between actually getting stuff done and answering comments and chat and interacting, it's very hard, and a lot of times you end up just doing both very poorly. Now, I realize for a lot of streamers, they don't care about the efficiency of the project they're working on. They're more doing things to be educational and show you know, the process of creating something. And this leads us to problem number two, and that's watching someone live stream code is an incredibly inefficient way to learn how to code. People think that they wanna watch every little detail that goes into building an app, but in reality, they don't wanna watch you struggle to get your code to run on your own computer because you're getting some kind of path error and you spend the next 40 minutes debugging it. There's just too much dead time. And for that reason, it's almost strictly better to watch a video series compared to watching someone live stream. I would almost never recommend to a beginner to watch someone live stream code to get better at it. Part of the issue is coding a real project takes a long time. I can watch Grandmaster Hikaru play an entire game of chess in the next 10 minutes, but I could watch Handmade Hero work on his game for the next two hours and only see a sliver of his code base, which is kind of related to problem number three and is the main thing that kills live coding. And that's, it's very hard to follow along with what they are coding, especially if you are new to the programming language they are using or if you're just new to the stream. When I open up a stream of someone playing Fortnite, I know right away what they're doing. But when I open up a stream of someone coding and they're just there on the screen, they got their text editor up, they're typing away, I may or may not know the programming language they are using, but even if I do, I most certainly don't know their code base. And it's really tough if you're not familiar with the technologies or the libraries that they're using. For example, I popped into the Wolfram channel and saw this giant graph and had no idea what was going on and didn't feel like investing the time and figuring it out, so I just left the stream. The fact that as a viewer, you have to put more effort into figuring out what's going on, even if you're familiar with the technology being used, is a deterrent. And it makes it harder to just kind of watch casually. And that is one of the things that I think is a big thing making coding live streams less popular. All right, I also have a bonus flaw for you that's very near and dear to my heart and may affect some other programmers as well. And that's when I am programming, I am not just sitting at my computer. 
I also have to think. And when I'm thinking, I like to just pace around the room and pace around and walk and go anywhere than sit in my chair. So when I live stream and I have to think while sitting, I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot annoying. So yeah, that's kind of the problems you're gonna encounter when you try live streaming code. And I'm kind of specifically talking about when you're building a project over, you know, multiple streams and it's kind of a large project, but really these things pop up doing when you're doing any kind of live coding. This is not to say that you shouldn't live stream code ever, but I do think you should look at the opportunity costs. If your goal is to finish a project, you should be doing that off stream, doing focus work without interruptions. If you're trying to do something educational, I think it's just strictly better to build a video series. And then if you are trying to kind of build your following as a streamer or be entertaining, instead of trying to do a coding stream, just do something coding or tech related that is not necessarily you just sitting there and coding for hours. But yeah, I wish these things weren't a problem. I would love it if live streaming code was more popular. I would love to become the next ninja of coding, having a nice cooler of Red Bull next to me while I build the next Facebook for the world to see but mine is the part where I sell my soul to Microsoft. But the reality is live streaming code is a poor use of my time and it's a poor use of my viewers time. And for that reason, that's not something that I wanna do anymore. And that's not to say I won't ever live stream again. It just probably won't be coding on a project.